really weird. Like, you've got so many amazing people here. I'm so just inspired by so many people. You've got CEOs, like just change makers, sustainable minded people. You've got charity founders, so many people. And then there's me. <laughs> I, I can't sing or dance, sorry. I'm a writer and very unlikely model, <laughs> and I guess a reluctant influencer. But I have a pretty good story to tell, and I like to think I can impart some wisdom too. But first, I have to get into the right mindset. Where am I at? Okay, I'm good. So I was a drama student for many years, and I learned that Sometimes the best thing you can do to get into the right frame of mind and also convince people you are performing to that you know what you're doing, but also that you're embodying a character and you're being more confident in yourself. And sometimes the best way to do that and the simplest way to do that is just to breathe. So I'm going to do that now. And as you breathe, you kind of embody the character a bit more, or you kind of, you know, make yourself a bit taller, more confident, find your stance. I had never been ill before. I had all the usual stuff you have growing up, coughs, colds chest infections, chicken pox, fevers, flu. I had tonsillitis quite a few times. Never got them removed. All my friends did, not me for some reason, whatever. I was also weirdly obsessed with my appendix when I was younger. I really wanted it removed. <laughs> it's gone now, uh, along with a significant chunk of my lower intestine, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> I'd never been to a &E. Never spent the night in hospital. Never broken a bone. My parents will probably disagree, but I would say for the first 20 to 21 years of my life, I was pretty low maintenance. You know, low key, no drama, all good. At the end of May 2014, I was completing my degree. I was just two weeks away, actually, from the actual end looking into the unknown. I'd handed in all my creative writing assignments. I'd done all my drama performances. I even handed in my creative writing dissertation or extended creative project. Got my marks back, did pretty good. I was looking out into the future and it was terrifying. It was like this huge leap into the unknown. And one of my good friends actually said to me, to not think of it as a big scary leap into the unknown, but as a walk down a corridor full of open doors. I really like a good analogy. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll adjust my way of thinking, I'll think that way. Open doors, it's great. But then on the 28th of May, 2014, I was told I needed brain surgery. Okay, it didn't happen that quickly. <laughs> uh, I may have said it that way for dramatic effect. <laughs> no, it was actually five months uh, run up to that earth shattering statement. Um, five months of twitching and walking into things, falling over, eventually losing function in the right side of my body. Couldn't ham right. There were a lot of spilled coffees. RIP. That uh, extended creative project I mentioned, I wrote it all one handed because I couldn't type. And that was all thanks to my little buddy in here. I mean, I call him my buddy, I guess. If you want to get technical, <clears throat> you'd call him a low-grade paleocytic astrocytoma lodged deep in my left temporal lobe between my brainstem and my cerebellum with attached cysts. According to my histology reports, he was growing in there for anywhere between 10 and 15 years, unbeknownst to me. And my wonderful neurosurgeon once told me that he reckons there are only 100 people in the world, me included, who have what I have. 
because it's very rare, unique, and complex. <clears throat> yeah, it was weird being told that I had that. It's now my buddy. Very weird to know that I'd been host to this thing that wasn't supposed to be there. Well, it kind of was, because it was predisposed at birth. I didn't get it from anyone. I can't give it to anyone, which is great. And yeah, these days he's my buddy. We have a pretty good relationship. It's a couple centimeters of him left in there somewhere. But when he first came into my life, he was a blip. That's what we called him. Then nine months after my first craniotomy, when he grew back, he became a bugger. Had to have radio, all that. But yeah, these days we've got a pretty good relationship, provided he remains stable. I just got on with it, you know? I had my diagnosis, so I just put a smile on and breezed through it, because that's what you do. The only time I got upset in the time between my first diagnosis and my first craniotomy was when my parents and my grandparents, all four of them at one time or another, said to me that they wished they could take it from me and go through it themselves so I wouldn't have to. Which obviously was very kind of them, but I had to explain to them, as selfish as it sounds, I don't mind as long as it's me. If it were you, I would probably struggle more because I wouldn't be able to help and I'd have to watch you go through it. All the while it's me, it's okay. That was the way I felt. I had this weird, right from the beginning, I had this deep feeling in my gut that as long as it was happening to me, it wouldn't happen to anyone else. I don't know where it came from, but yeah, I had that really strong feeling that I was sparing someone else by going through it myself. I was taking one for the team. That's what got me through most of it. It's what got me through four years, five major surgeries, one course of radiotherapy. That was what kept me going through it. So I had my two craniotomies for 2014, 2015, radiotherapy 2015 as well. 2016, I took a year off, didn't fancy it. I made up for it though in 2017, I had two gnarly bowel operations. And then in 2018, I had to have a partial reconstruction surgery on my face because of something that had happened in my second craniotomy. And I was fine, I just smiled through it. People would always say to me, oh my God, you're so brave. You're like so positive. How are you so positive the whole way through this? You're so inspirational. I was like, I'm just getting on with it, aren't I? You know, fine. It was after. Yeah, that was when, that was when it got bad. After all that. I went to see my GP because I was sad. I literally sat with him in his office and I said, I don't understand. Like, I'm, I'm pretty good. Like, you know, I've gone best part of a year now, no surgeries. Why am I so sad? I've got through it all. And he gave me the most perfect analogy for it. He said, when you're going through something, it's a lot like in a cartoon when you see characters, you know, chasing each other, running off the side of a cliff over a canyon, and they, they keep running, these cartoons. You see them, you see them go, you see their legs turning and turning, and they're powering through the air, and they, they have no idea. <laughs> they think they're still on solid land, and they keep going. And it's only when they're nearly there, <laughs> nearly to the other side, and they stop, and they look down, and they realize just how much trouble they're in, and how far they have to fall. And that's when they fall. And then my GP <laughs> did something so unexpected. He said to me, I'm gonna medically prescribe you a good cry. I just, it, it worked. I just, bur just burst into tears right there in his office. Because, I, not just because it was medically prescribed and I'd been given permission, but because I realized that in that moment, in that doctor's office, with the hospital bed in the corner and all the books on the wall, just him and me, I didn't have to be brave or positive or inspirational. 
I could just be me with my feelings and I could let them out. And I'll always be grateful to him for that. I love crying. <laughs> oh, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> I cry so much, <laughs> you don't even know. And we go through so much. I mean, I hope none of you ever have to go through anything like I did. But we go through so much just as humans. <laughs> you know, there's loss, heartbreak, rejection, so many things. And I find, personally, the best way to go through it and the best way to process your feelings, don't bottle anything up. <laughs> let it all out. Sit with it, as uncomfortable as it might be. Sit with it and let it out. And a great way to do that is by crying. So with that in mind, I'm not a medical professional by any means. I, if you'll allow, I would like to prescribe all of you with a good, hard cry. The prescription is valid indefinitely and is to be redeemed as required. <laughs> <laughs>